Hey, what's up guys? Everything Apple Pro here. In anticipation of Apple's upcoming iPhone 12 in just a couple few months here, hopefully, got a lot of details to help hold you over. Some exclusives with Max Weinbach, including an actual speaker sample. Got some new camera details, battery details, info on a braided cable, actual packaging, and a host of other Apple leaks. Now, I want to start with a quick update for my Phone Rebel supporters. So, Rebel Series is now sold out until August 10th. We're having some production issues. We're a little behind. We still have a number of orders to ship. We will resume on August 10th. And meanwhile, we're working on a lot of awesome gadgets. Very excited about this future. And Gen 2 is looking very peachy, both our open-ended case and closed. So stay tuned on final developments. Thank you for supporting. Let's get into the video. All right, so I'd like to start with an update to ProMotion, the 120 Hertz refresh rate display situation. In the last video, we learned that it wouldn't be happening. Now, Max Weinbeck is confirming that the iPhones will ship, at least the Pro models, with a 120 hertz capable display, but it will be deactivated. And it's very, very unlikely that Apple will change that before launch. So it's safe to assume 120 hertz is dead in the water and not happening on this year's iPhone. Weinbeck continues saying the iPhone 12 Pro bezels will be thinner than the standard iPhone 12 series, but even the iPhone 12 series will feature thinner bezels than last year's iPhone 11. He also claims that final prototypes will be available this month, so all of the final details, which have not yet been confirmed, we'll start hearing about very soon here. Again, we're just a couple, maybe three months away from launch. All right, now take this next piece with blind faith. I understand it's completely impossible to prove it, but Max Weinbeck's source has shared with him an iPhone 12 speaker sample. So here's an 11 Pro playing the sound first at 50% volume. and the iPhone 12 Pro series, also at 50% volume. Notice the deeper bass and clarity is much improved. Take a look around me. Weinbeck says is, I believe it's real. I know they have the phone and these results do seem to mimic what we would expect. Remember Weinbeck did earlier leak that the speakers would be getting a huge improvement on the iPhone 12 series, and these samples seem to confirm that. And we've gotten our first look at the lightning cable to be included with this year's iPhone 12 lineup, and it's braided. This essentially fixes one of the biggest flaws with Apple cables is that they fray at the edges with repeated use. Braided cables are known for their durability, and Apple here has been experimenting with them since the HomePod release. And most recently with the Mac Pro, they include a black weaved lightning cable. It looks awesome. Apple is including a much better cable with this year's iPhone. Weinbach also confirms that the smaller iPhone box rumor we heard about in the last video, it's true. And Apple will be saving about 1.5 to two times the space in transport, which will directly contribute to lower emissions, carbon release, due to the smaller packaging, and that's amazing. Apple has repeatedly made their commitments known to renewable energy, and they wanna go carbon neutral by 2030, so this is a great step towards that. Even hinting about it on their website, saying lighter on the planet right out of the box. And supposedly Apple will be removing the power adapter within the packaging as well, making it even lighter, but not lighter on your wallet. And Max Weinbeck reports that more OEMs are looking to follow Apple in their footsteps and remove power adapters and headphones in the boxes of their phones. Samsung in particular is reaching out, trying to consider whether it's a good idea. Max Weinbeck also reports that for Apple, the end of life, official end of life for the 2019 iPhone series will be September 30th. It's unclear which devices they'll be keeping and discounting, but it's safe to assume that the 11 Pro and Pro Max are probably being discontinued. And Ming-Chi Kuo has published a new report detailing improvements coming to the camera on this year's iPhone. So he's saying the autofocus will be greatly improving because Apple is using an all new technology. It's called voice coil motor optical image stabilization. And looking into the patent that Apple has owned for quite some time now, essentially the autofocus system is being replaced from a spring-based system to a magnet-based system. Magnet miniaturization, what a time to be alive. It's seriously cool. I mean, we've seen this in other Android smartphones, but for Apple, this is new. And combine this with sensor shift image stabilization, which is also happening on this year's iPhones, that's gonna make a major camera upgrade aside from everything else they have planned. And Ming-Chi Kuo supports his earlier report saying, Periscope Zoom is indeed happening on the 2022 iPhones. Apple is now in talks with suppliers on production. This will greatly increase the optical zoom capability of the iPhone. We don't have any specs, but knowing other OEMs that have this in their smartphones, it's seriously impressive. And I think it was only a matter of time till Apple implemented it. A report from Digitimes claims that even though this year's iPhones will be capable of both 
sub six gigahertz and millimeter wave 5G, next year's iPhones will not. Apple will be diversifying and splitting up the lineup depending on the region they're launching it. So different areas of the world may not have the same components just because it's not necessary and it would save Apple on production costs. Interesting. Now actual images of the iPhone 12 lineup batteries have leaked along with the actual milliamp capacities via a certification website. And let's just say they're very disappointing compared to what we expected. Max Weinbach previously reported that we'd be seeing between 4,000 to 4,400 milliamps on the 12 Pro Max. This website confirms that it's far less at 3,687 milliamps. That's not only nowhere near what the leak suggested, it's far less than the 11 Pro Max, which has 3,969. For the rest of the lineup, equally disappointing, much smaller than anticipated. Now it's surprising because we heard that there would be advancements here, a new power chip that could enable a larger battery. The frame, the square frame would actually fit more internals in. So it's a bit mystifying seeing that the battery capacities are less. And a new Twitter leaker is suggesting that this year's iPhones may arrive with support for reverse wireless charging, a feature notably missing on the iPhone 11 Pro series. Seems very unlikely knowing the actual capacities that have just leaked on the iPhone 12 lineup. But he says this technology could be possible because Apple will be including gallium nitride inside of this year's iPhones. So this is a new technology taking power adapters by storm. It allows a smaller frame, but way bigger power output capacities. Somewhat related piece of news, Apple is working on a smart battery case that does not have a lightning port connector. It would charge your iPhone via wireless charging. It would have two coils inside, one for input, one for output. It's possible that Apple has improved the efficiency of the coil system on the iPhone 12 so much that it could be possible to include reverse wireless charging. But again, knowing those battery capacities seems unlikely. Also Twitter leaker love to dream once again confirms that the iPhone 12 Pro models will indeed come with six gigabytes of RAM. We already knew this, just some confirmation. And Twitter leaker Mr. White has shared actual images of production of the Apple A14. It looks very similar to the A13, just missing the bottom line of text. Pretty cool though. Some crazy news from TSMC. They're set to begin risk production for their three nanometer processors. They're on track to begin launching in 2022. This would presumably be the Apple A16 by then. Three nanometers across, more would be stunned. Also that leak we heard about a triple layer logic board on the iPhone, which sounded crazy at the time, is now becoming even more likely as Apple will be building mini LED devices such as MacBooks and iPads with a triple layer logic board design in mind. So going forward, it's very possible that Apple will extend this to the iPhone. Not sure if it'll be this year, next, or for the Apple A16. Glass company Corning has announced a new version of their popular Gorilla Glass. They're calling it Gorilla Glass Victus, which fixes one of the biggest issues with iPhones nowadays, and that's scratches. Yes, it's a very durable glass. It'll hold up great to drops, but over time, it's very susceptible to scratches. And this latest version fixes that. Not only is it more drop resistant, it's far more scratch resistant than anything out there right now. Unclear if it'll arrive on the iPhone 12. Samsung set to receive this technology first, but I'm sure Apple will eventually adopt it. Also a new feature found in iOS 14 beta 3. This is the display zoom feature for smaller phones, 5.8 inches. 9 to 5 Mac has found that in a simulator, you can scale it down perfectly to a 5.4 inch display. So of course, Apple is building iOS 14 with the 5.4 inch iPhone in mind. It's interesting to see the scaling and aspect ratio of that interface. They're not making it any smaller. It'll be just as easy to use as any other iPhone. And Makatakara claims to know the launch timeframe of this year's iPhones, saying that in late October, they'll first be launching the 4G LTE variants and later on in November, they'll launch the fully fledged 5G models. And analysts at Wedbush believe there are one of three scenarios which Apple could use. The most likely being that Apple launches in September with a very limited stock, which will quickly sell out and there'll be a waiting period. Two, they can stagger the launch like they did with the iPhone 10 and 10R, launch both models at the same time, but then actually release the pro models about a month after. And three, they could delay the keynote to October and then launch all at the same time, but this is the least likely one. And some news on AirPods Pro 2 by Digitimes. They're claiming the launch will happen in the second half of 2021. No details on any functionality, but they're saying they'll likely be produced in Vietnam. Apple rumors leaks claims Apple AirTags will be launching in September or October. They've noticeably been missing from any leaks. We haven't heard anything about them. 
in quite some time and they will require iOS 14. This Twitter leaker also believes that the smaller wireless charger Apple is working on, call it AirPower Mini, will be launching with a price tag from $99 to $149, quite steep. Apple Rumors Leaks claims there will be an event in both September and October in which Apple will be releasing the product digitally, unlikely that media will appear, and he claims that there are a host of new Apple products which could be released as soon as next month. Love to Dream also believes the same, dreaming about the fact that there are multiple Apple products ready to ship. And a new Twitter leaker believes that Apple is working on a dedicated game console. This would be powered by ARM, and no, not Apple Pippin 2, something new entirely. Apple Rumors Leaks also believes that Apple is working on a dedicated game controller, which is set to release in 2021. This would have a lightning port and wireless charging. And Apple has given us a quick preview of emojis coming to iOS 14 this fall, including more faces, people, body parts, um, for example, pinched fingers, anatomical heart and lungs, a lot of new animals, food, and more. Oh, and iOS 14 has been jailbroken by the Pangu team, unlikely to see the light of day, but Interesting as always to see that it's possible. And 9to5Mac has found irrefutable evidence of Face ID coming to the Mac, in particular iMac, likely later this year or next year. All right guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace.